is touching the truth. A dark basement filled with a suffocating stench and less than a healthy percentage of oxygen content, it was the type of shady place every parent warned their children about. A place you should never visit after dark. Unfortunately, Kanzuya found himself in this devious place, sitting on a rusty steel chair, hands cuffed behind him. A blonde man in a shiny suit sneered down at him and raised a revolver in his hand. The cold barrel touched his forehead. A wave of chill passed over him as a droplet of sweat dripped down his cheeks, falling onto his messy white shirt. Kanzuya, blame your hard-ass grandfather for prioritizing his job over your life, the Yakuza-like man said, his tone colder than Kanzuya's terror but his eyes carried a faint look of pity. The sin for your death will be on his soul. He shifted the blame of murdering an innocent soul on someone else. Instead of crying or begging for mercy, Kanzuya simply sighed. Almost half a day has passed since they brought him here, yet nobody came to his rescue. Giants danced in his stomach, requesting food maniacally. He wasn't going to cry and avert his eyes from reality, this was the end. There was no use pretending otherwise. He was fortunate to survive a similar crisis two times. First time with a broken right arm and second time with a bullet hole in his left thigh. He almost lost his little brother because of a misfire between the Yakuza and the police. Both times, the police arrived to negotiate in less than an hour. This time the stakes were too high. Between a university freeloader and a group of EX-class terrorists, a hero of justice like his grandfather would choose the latter. Fucking Gramps, Kanzuya cursed under his breath. Kill me, man. He'll hunt you down sooner or later. His grandfather had spoiled him rotten ever since his parents died. The old man gave him a private chef for his daily meals, a maid for his daily needs, a seat in a prestigious school, and most importantly, a home to live in. He was extremely grateful but also resentful. Love was irrational, hatred even more. His life became a terrible joke because of his grandfather's job. He wanted to leave the city, even the fucking country. But his only relative became emotional and possessive, refusing to let Kanzuya step out of his protection. He merely wanted to live without constant aggression. Unfortunately, he won't get that peace in this life. The terrorist looked shaken at the mention of Kanzuya's grandfather. No, he doesn't care about you. Any last words before we put you out of misery? Last words, huh? Kanzuya smiled at the men standing behind the blondie. The chances of making it out alive were almost non-existent but he wanted to punch this asshole so badly. If he couldn't live, then his enemies shouldn't either. That's how he saw things. No then, I have a few. Kanzuya cut off the blonde man with a friendly smile. Leave a letter for Gramps in my stead. Ask him to transfer all my inheritance to my friend Ryosuke. Ryosuke usually declined Kanzuya's attempt to help him. Could Ryosuke refuse the last wish of a dead friend? Definitely not. With some money, Ryosuke could be free from his part-time jobs and live a decent life. And finish the Akame GA Kill manga for me. I haven't read the last few chapters. I heard they were kinda mediocre compared to the rest of the series I still wanna finish it. They kidnapped him near the climax of that heart-wrenching manga. What a tragic timing. The hooligan with a revolver was dumbstruck. Kanzuya wasn't lying, though. He really wanted to finish that story and wallow in the following hollowness for a day or two. Oh wait. Send a letter to Yumisensei as well. Tell her I loved her to death. If she needs money, she can slap my grandfather. Yumi was closest to him after his grandfather and his stupid friend. After a year of corrupting, pursuing his hot teacher, she agreed to date him. He would no longer get to enjoy late private lectures. His life wasn't that bad, per se. His teacher come girlfriend balanced his daily life with a super possessive, just as hungry grandfather. One more thing fuck you and your comrades for kidnapping me now. Couldn't you have planned three more months? My grandfather might have died in an elaborate scheme, I mean accident. You dickheads would have assassinated that stupid president. Jesus Christ, you all are impatient like fucking kindergartners. He took a deep breath after his outburst. It felt like a stone was lifted off of his chest. Ah, there is no better stress relief than yelling. 
Kanzuya's words struck some nerves in his kidnapper as his handsome face turned crimson. You little cunt, terrorist San pressed the barrel deeper into his forehead. Staring down at his death certainly gave him some regret. His only trouble with death was, does the afterlife exist? If not, where will he go after death? Will he simply stop existing? As he fell into a loop of thoughts, the blonde man squeezed the trigger. Bang! A red sheen filled his vision. A searing pain exploded in his head, making him cry out in agony. His eyes fluttered closed, and his head slumped, the burning sensation gradually waning. Silence fell in the aftermath of his death. Hold on why can I think? His consciousness was intact after the gunshot. Did his brain survive the bullet from that range? Unlikely, considering the pitch black surrounding him. He was hovering in nowhere, devoid of every sensation, not even the pain inflicted by the bullet. Something was wrong, he could feel it in his bones. Character, Kanzuya Ishihara, created. An oh-so-familiar floating window emerged in the sea of darkness. Character. Is this system? That shitty reincarnation trope of empowering a protagonist to the divine levels for no reason. He wasn't fond of systems, as they forced unreasonable tasks on their host. Let's not forget the fact that most systems were part of some end-level boss's scheme, or given by some alternate version of the main characters. Amidst his confusion, the sensation of his body returned. He felt lurching up and down, the exaggerated motion of a horse's gait all too familiar. He had been riding horses since he was a child, but hadn't straddled one since he graduated from high school. As he blinked away the last vestiges of sleep, he saw a panorama of jagged peaks, craggy summits, and snow-covered ridgelines. The stars were absent in the ink-black sky, only a half-moon fighting a losing battle against the darkness. Was the moon always this close? Hey, you. You're finally awake. A slash N, huge props for sticking around to the end of this chapter. This FIC is just another thought I had after reading Bleach manga. That said, come back for the next chapter. Following events happened prior to Kanzuya's awakening. Hollows thrived on Rasher, the mystical substance that wove itself into the very soul of every being. The high concentration of Rasher in Hueco Mundo allowed even the weakest Hollows to convert the ambient energy into their Ryurioku. Hollows dwelling in Hueco Mundo could survive without consuming souls, unlike their ravenous counterparts that haunted the living world. However, there were those whose insatiable hunger could not be sated by mere Rasher or human souls. Compelled by a gnawing void, these hollows resorted to cannibalism, feasting on their own kind. This grisly act of predation spurred their evolution into a new and terrifying breed, the Minos. The Jillians and Ajuchas existed in a perpetual state of predation, each driven by the desire for evolution. Aloof and enigmatic, the Vasto Lord surveyed the lesser beings from their lofty perch, seldom finding a soul worthy of increasing their immense power. This relentless cycle of devouring and being devoured was the unspoken law that governed Hueco Mundo, where the weak were inevitably consumed by the strong. The weak become a part of the strong. Among the countless hollows, one was named Emilu Apache. She knew nothing about the origin of her name but she certainly had a bit of attachment to it. In the hierarchy of hollows, Apache was no weakling, she had triumphed in many battles. Yet it was the sting of her losses that etched deeper grooves into her soul. Over time, Apache developed a cunning strategy for survival, avoiding formidable foes with her lithe, deer-like form. When fleeing was impossible, she channeled spiritual energy into her horns, unleashing devastating torrents of Cyril. As an Ajuchas, she possessed immense power, but she chose to subsist on the ambient ratio rather than devouring others. Today has been an easygoing day for the peace-loving deer. She gracefully traversed the vast, moonlit desert, her hooves crunching softly upon the pristine white sands. The pale moon hung low in the sky, casting a ghostly light upon the barren expanse. Abruptly, she halted, her heart pounding in her chest as she caught sight of two cerulean legs protruding from a nearby dune, as if their owner had been entombed alive. With her eyes narrowed to mere slits, Apache scanned the desolate horizon, her senses on high alert as she sought to detect the sinister hollows responsible for this trap. I'm no fool. As an Ajuchas, her keen senses could vaguely pick up Hollow's presences, even those unseen by her eyes. The result, however, left her stunned. What? There's no one here. Her curiosity peaked, 
she twisted her elegant neck to survey the surroundings once more before returning her gaze to the slender legs, which seemed too delicate to belong to a hollow. It's none of my damned business, she muttered, turning away and storming off. Yet a minute later, she found herself inexplicably drawn back to the mysterious legs, which remained motionless and unchanged. What on earth is their problem? Unable to quell her curiosity any longer, Apache clamped her teeth into the blue cloth wrapping the leg and yanked its owner free from the sands, finally getting a good look at the stranger. To her amazement, this was a hollow unlike any she had encountered before. Every aspect of his appearance, from his tattered clothes to his disheveled, silvery hair, whispered of humanity. His mask, adorned with twisted horns and wicked teeth, signified his true nature as a hollow and she couldn't help but notice the striking black wings upon his back. A male. Apache's experiences with male hollows in Hueco Mundo had been nothing short of disastrous, as they had all sought to eat her in a literal sense. However, this one seemed different. His serene and refined features exuded no aggression, and his weak riatsu gave her pause, making her question whether to kill and consume him. He's unconscious. And his legs. Her eyes widened in shock. What a terrible fate to suffer. Two translucent holes marred his thighs, reminiscent of a hollow symbolic heart. While such holes typically caused no interference in daily life, the gaping voids in his legs seemed destined to have dire consequences, as there was scarcely any flesh left to support him. A distant howl sent shivers down Apache's spine, her body tensing with fear. A formidable predator, an ajuchas who preyed on weaker ajuchas like her, was nearby. I have to go. Casting a fleeting glance at the unconscious man, she bit his shirt and tossed him into the air. As he landed on her back, she dashed across the moonlit sands. I'll use him as bait, she rationalized, attempting to justify the unexpected surge of compassion that swelled within her for the stranger. In her mind, she reasoned that he would surely perish without assistance in this unforgiving realm. Hey, you. You're finally awake. Kanzuya might have mistaken everything for Skyrim opening if the voice speaking to him didn't have a feminine touch. Well, being a dragonborn would have been a fine fate. Kanzuya adjusted himself into a more comfortable position on his unexpected mount, a deer-like creature adorned with brown fur on its back and grey skin on its front. Two striking white antlers crowned its head. As he surveyed his surroundings, he realized there was no rider directing the creature, only himself. Apache turned her head, catching a glimpse of Kanzuya in her peripheral vision. Are you a Vasto lord, she inquired in a slow, husky tone, noting that his size matched the rumored dimensions of the powerful hollows, your riatsu doesn't line up with that. Vasto lord? Kanzuya furrowed his brow, trying to remember where he had heard the term. It was a familiar phrase, one that lingered on the edge of his memory, but the details remained frustratingly elusive. He strained to dredge it up from the depths of his recollection. Ugh, where did I hear that? At the sound of his whispered question, Apache stopped in her tracks, her ears nearly melting from the pleasant timbre of his voice. His voice is so nice. What am I doing? Snapping out of her reverie, she shook her head vigorously, her ears flapping against her face. Do you not know Vasto Lord? Is this your first day in Hueco Mundo? That can't be right. Minos aren't born with small humanoid forms like yours. As Apache explained the nature of hollows and their various forms, she wondered if, by some miracle, she had misread the man's riatsu. After all, Kanzuya was significantly smaller than a typical Jillian and lacked the wildness of an ajuchas. Behind his mask, Kanzuya's eyes narrowed in thought. The mention of Hueco Mundo and Minos swept away the fog obscuring his memories, and he gazed around in disbelief. The stark white landscape, with rolling dunes punctuated by barren trees and enormous boulders, seemed surreal yet eerily familiar. The sand appeared lifeless, and the air was still and clear as if made of glass. It was as if he had stepped into a vivid world that mirrored his own reality. In a sudden moment of clarity, he realized that this place perfectly matched the world from a specific anime. Ah! Kanzuya barely managed to suppress the urge to scream at the top of his lungs, as his current situation demanded an extreme reaction. Somehow, he had been transported to the world of Shinigami, Hollows, and Quincy, the world of Bleach. It had taken a bullet to his head, but he was finally free from his grandfather's grasp. Is this my reward for putting up with all the bullshit? He drew in a deep breath, filling his lungs with the cold, 
dusty air that permeated Hueco Mundo. This was neither a dream nor a fabrication of his dying mind. As the reality of his situation settled in, he let out a long sigh. Dear dear, may I ask your name? Politeness was necessary when one didn't know what the fuck was happening. A little respect went a long way in building trust and preventing unnecessary conflicts. The owner of the voice considered his request for a few seconds. Apache. Apache. After some recollection, Kanzuya recognized the name. She was one of the Trace Bestias, Tyr Haribel's fraction. The tanned Espada with golden hair, easily one of his most favorite female characters ever, led Apache and her two friends. This is rather bizarre. Somehow, he found himself in a timeline preceding the moment when Apache encountered Tyr Haribel and transformed into an Erencar under Aizen. A timeline where the cunning Aizen had not yet seized control of Las Noches. Maybe he already did. He couldn't be entirely sure about the convoluted chronology of Bleach. What about yours? Don't expect to take mine without giving yours. Apache snapped at his silence. Cat got your tongue or what? Perhaps it was Kanzuya's even temper and obliviousness to Hueco Mundo that put her at ease. She felt no danger, allowing her true character to shine through, while polite on the surface, she was a hollow with a fiery demeanor. Kanzuya, he answered, his fingers brushing the skeletal mask that concealed most of his face. It's, this prompted him to observe the other changes in his body. He was wearing the same clothes during his death, a white shirt and jeans, both of which were torn in embarrassing spots, showing his pale white skin. One of those holes exposed the gaping hole in his thighs. Two holes, to be precise. Hmm. I think I remember this. Every hollow's hole, at least in higher evolutions, symbolized an aspect, what a hollow lacked in most cases before their death or the cause of their death. He remembered that much from the material. For example, a hollow hole near the stomach signified a craving for strength, whereas one in the eye meant blindness to certain things. What is mine supposed to mean? He gently punched his thigh, then tried moving his legs. He could use his legs just fine. Terrified of your holes? Apache asked. We are hollows. Why tire out your legs walking when we can fly instead? Ha, huh, indeed. He chuckled at her indirect attempt to comfort him. So, Apache, where are we headed? How would I know, she retorted. Someplace I don't have to constantly run away from those damning incarnations of gluttony. As if by instinct, Kanzuya tenderly stroked her crest, his fingers trailing through the velvety fur that extended down her head. It was a habit he had acquired while horse riding as a gesture of affection for his steed. Watch where you touch. I am not your pet. Despite her irate tone, she didn't order him to dismount. He glanced at his legs and smiled, touched by her subtle kindness. Even in a perilous world, she extended her compassion to a stranger. Perhaps she was relieved to discover someone reasonable in Hueco Mundo, a companion who wouldn't betray her and transform her into food. And they say hollows are evil. He would have considered seducing her if she was in her Erencar form. He had always harbored a fondness for tomboys. Regrettably, she wouldn't attain her human form anytime soon. A shame. Oh, right. I almost forgot about that pop-up window. Character system, wasn't it? As if responding to his curiosity, a colossal gray box materialized, obstructing his vision. Character system, he skimmed past the status and focused on a three-dimensional model to the side, which displayed his current appearance as if he were a character in a video game. His clothing alone served as ample evidence that the model represented him. Disregarding his newly elongated silver hair and pallid white skin, his gaze fixated on the pair of black, feathery wings. He reached towards his back and grasped the soft bones protruding from his shoulder blades. He gently rolled his shoulder blades, sensing the muscles of his wings stretch and awaken. The wings, stirring from a profound slumber, appeared delicate and shadowy, as though they possessed a life of their own. I have wings. He widened his eyes with anticipation and took a deep breath. His wings fluttered almost hypnotically and then, with an inner strength that he never knew he had, he began to vigorously flap them up and down. The wind generated by his efforts captured Apache's attention. So, can you fly? Kanzuya ceased his winged antics and patted her back. I don't know. 
He returned his gaze to the status and discovered that his half-mask bore a striking resemblance to a demonic skull. Its oversized holes revealed his striking blue eyes, and a menacing set of teeth aligned with the mask where it overlapped his lips. Even the twisted horns appeared as though they belonged to a demon. Am I some kind of demon? General information, name, Kanzuya Ishihara gender, male race, hollow, vasto lord, Ryoko level, great level, captain class, alignment, neutral evil affiliation, non-racial abilities, Siro, Ryoko offensive technique mastery level yet to learn. Sonido, movement technique mastery level yet to learn. Garganta, limited spatial distortion technique. Mastery level yet to learn. Innate abilities, silvery voice, your voice can influence people's state of mind. The ability works best in persuading or seducing someone. Unnamed slash undiscovered, manifestation of your hollow heart, crumbling heart, hollow living beings classified as hollow receive nourishment and enhancements. Regeneration, your wounds regenerate automatically. The time required depends on the severity of wounds. Acquired abilities, seduction, the ability to seduce those of the opposite gender. Mastery level basic, riding, the ability to ride a mount. Mastery level intermediate, arithmetic, the ability to process arithmetic problems. Mastery level intermediate, equipment, fine cotton shirt denim jeans, did I lose some memories? This certainly wasn't the status of a hollow who had just been born. A vasto lord with Ryoku rivaling a captain class, such power placed him near the apex of Hueco Mundo's hierarchy. In the grand scheme of things, however, he remained little more than high-class fodder. He simply couldn't measure up to endgame villains like the Quincy Sternritters. Neutral evil. It makes sense. He had always sought freedom, regardless of whether it violated laws. Not to mention the disdain he harbored for his grandfather, who risked his life for the greater good of society. Indeed, he never quite fit the mold of a lawful individual. Next came the racial abilities, a set of unlearned skills inherent to all Vasto Lord. Nothing extraordinary there. The truly exceptional aspects lay within his list of innate abilities. People had always complimented his voice, which also granted him an easier time with women. He couldn't fathom that this turned out to be one of his innate abilities. Crumbling Heart Despite its menacing name, it appeared to be a team-oriented ability that offered no tangible benefits to him personally. It could prove useful should he find trustworthy hollow allies. Scratch that, he would either seduce hollow women into trusting him or subdue them through the natural law of hollow's unknown hollow heart. He relegated the unknown aspect to the back of his mind and perused the remainder of his status. His skills were hardly extraordinary. In fact, they wouldn't be considered overpowered in a world where a Quincy could bring his imagination to life and another could glimpse the future and manipulate it at will. This can't be it. There have to be other functions. A thunderous roar snatched away his attention before he could embark on another exploration of his system. Apache trembled, recognizing the owner of the roar. It's back. Arg, we're dead. So dead. A few days prior, she had encountered the giant Ajuchas, her sonido and natural agility had enabled her to escape its ravenous maw. However, her current Ryoku wasn't sufficient to use her rudimentary level sonido for more than 30 seconds, not enough time to evade the Ajuchas hellbent on consuming her. An enemy? This is troublesome. He had yet to master basic hollow techniques, such as controlling his Ryoku or spiritual power. While he could rival an average Captain Class Shinigami in terms of Ryurioka quantity, he possessed no experience in controlling it. You bet it is. Apache kicked the ground, accelerating her pace. Learn to fly, damn it. I can't carry you everywhere like a slave. Their predator appeared atop the hill behind them, a colossal snake-like beast with eight arms and the lower body of a caterpillar. The skeletal mask on its head and the bone-like armor on its shoulders detracted somewhat from its fearsome appearance. The monster seemed right at home amidst the desolate, agony-filled landscape of Hueco Mundo. The Ajuchas leaped down the hill and pursued them with its numerous writhing legs, kicking up a sandstorm in its wake. There is only one fate awaiting you, little dear. Cease your resistance and become a part of a greater Ajuchas like me. Kanzuya remained oddly unfazed by the situation, as if his mind refused to acknowledge the massive beast as a threat. He patted Apache's back. Buy me some time. I'll kill him. 
For those wondering about MC's appearance, he looks like Merlin from Fate with some muscles. Oh, and the new cover is sexy. Apache could feel the confidence seeping from his voice like a warm, invigorating elixir, expelling the fear and doubts that had been ricocheting in her mind. She found herself unable to question the source of his conviction, as though she had faith in him. A hollow, having faith. She scoffed, a touch of incredulity coloring her thoughts. Trust me. Then, like a gentle breeze, his pleasant whisper caressed her ears, washing away her skepticism. She was akin to a desperate moth, drawn irresistibly towards a blazing inferno. Apache groaned at the ludicrous predicament she found herself in. Her choices had been whittled down to two, perishing inside a hollow stomach or placing trust in the man who exuded unwavering confidence in his abilities. Don't let me die. Channeling her Ryurioku into her legs, a thunderous boom reverberated behind her. Though her sonido skills were unremarkable, the sudden acceleration caught Kanzuya off guard. The wind slapped against his face, a sensation that would have sent his old body careening through the air. In his current state, however, the wind felt invigorating, reminiscent of riding his Suzuki. I love this world. Seizing the opportunity, he closed his eyes and immersed himself in the energy coursing within him. Controlling Ryurioku was an innate instinct for every hollow, and he deftly guided the flow of energy with his thoughts. Easier than I thought. Suddenly, Apache's knees buckled as she was subjected to his bone-chilling Riatsu. Her stumble sent them crashing down, and Kanzuya's clothes became even more tattered after tumbling across the ghostly white sand. Picking himself up and dusting off his clothes, he appeared unscathed after the devastating crash. His hollow holes posed no hindrance to his movements, serving solely as ornamental symbols. The sand in Hueco Mundo was peculiar, its grains bonded more tightly than those on a beach, as if an invisible energy held them together. Fool. I'm not a cripple. Meanwhile, awestruck and petrified, Apache gaped at the brilliant blue Riatsu emanating from Kanzuya, her body rendered immobile. The concentration of his Riatsu surpassed that of an Ajuchas class, hinting at a power beyond. As if, huh, I didn't think there would be another one with you, laughed the colossal Ajuchas, oblivious to Kanzuya's Riatsu as if his senses had been severely dulled. In truth, the snake-like hollow was teetering on the brink of regression. I'll eat you, first, then savor the female there. Kanzuya pivoted toward the ravenous Ajuchas and focused his Ryurioku into his hand. A dense sphere of azure energy materialized, its very existence warping the air around it. What can, suddenly, an icy shiver raced down the Ajuchas's spine, electrifying his nerves. His heart hammered wildly as he swiveled around, his eyes wide with panic and dread, desperately seeking an escape from the spine-chilling presence lurking behind him. Siro, at Kanzuya's command, the sphere of energy launched forward, expanding into a thick beam of light. The Siro ray obliterated the hollow's mask and head before tearing a gaping hole through the mountain in the distance. Kanzuya's first kill left him reeling, but for entirely different reasons. Holy cow, I'm strong. Racial ability, Siro learn. Current master level, basic. The sheer destruction caused by his rudimentary Siro mastery left him in awe. He could barely fathom the might of a fully mastered Ciro. Shaking his head, he approached Apache, who remained in a state of shock, understandably so. The Ajuchas that had nearly ended her life, he eradicated him with a single Ciro attack. As she gazed into his eyes, it seemed as though she was attempting to discern his true intentions. H. Huh. He was a vasto Lord Hollow, a being that most, if not all, Hollows in Hueco Mundo feared. While not as numerous as Jillian's and ordinary hollows, Ajuchas could be found throughout Hueco Mundo, particularly in Las Noches. Is he going to eat me? She swallowed hard and unsteadily got to her feet. Being devoured by him seemed more tolerable than meeting her end at the hands of the giant Ajuchas, but she refused to go down without a fight. Two won't die easily. Oblivious to her self-inflicted dilemma, he jumped onto her and stroked her back. I told you to trust me. And I think I'm a Vasto Lord. No shit, she whispered, suddenly aware of the weight on her back. Ha. Huh. What's the meaning of this? Aren't you going to, she stopped herself, not wanting to give him any ideas. What if he doesn't know that hollows become stronger by eating? She found it highly possible, as he wasn't aware of his own power as a Vasto Lord until now. 
Perhaps he lost his memories during a fight and ended up getting buried where she found him. She could speculate her entire life about his past and still wouldn't find the exact reason for his moments of ignorance. Stop murmuring things. We gotta move. Apache's tail slapped his back in protest, the only act of defiance she could muster in her current position. You can walk and fly. Get off my back. He leaned down and caressed her ears. I'll protect you from hollows. You'll let me ride you. A fair deal, right? Cueco Mundo seemed dreadfully dull without much variation in the environment. He needed her in his life, or he might just succumb to boredom. His soothing voice momentarily left her speechless. Fair deal my foot. I'm not accepting it because I'm grateful to you for saving me. Her flustered voice contradicted her feigned annoyance. Unable to handle the embarrassment, she strutted along obediently and quickened her pace. Kanzuya rolled his eyes. Her behavior strongly resembled that of Atsundra, with the way she masked her gratitude beneath a facade of irritation. To be honest, he found the trait irritating. Seeing people being dishonest with their feelings, hiding their true emotions behind a veil of stubbornness, could be incredibly frustrating at times. Do you want to eat him? He asked. You can if you feel like it. Vasto Lord, like him, didn't need to eat to evolve, and he didn't use enough Ryoku to feel hungry. Not that he was interested in eating a giant blob of unsavory raw flesh. The thought alone repulsed him. My only evolution from here is Erenkar. To achieve this, he would have to find a way to remove his mask. He recalled that Apache and her friends hadn't been Vasto Lord when they met Aizen, they had become Erenkar with the help of Hogyoku, which proved that the transformation was possible for any hollow. How am I supposed to do it? Just rip off my mask, the mere thought of tearing away his mask filled him with an instinctual, primal fear, akin to the terror a mortal being might feel when faced with the cold embrace of death. Interesting. No wonder Aizen had needed the Hogyoku to blur the line between Hollow and Shinigami in order to create Erenkar. Overcoming this innate fear would demand an extraordinary amount of willpower and conviction, qualities that not every Hollow possessed. Many would falter, either dying in the process or succumbing to their primitive instincts. I'll need more information before trying it. As Kanzuya was lost in thought, Apache snuck a furtive glance at the fallen hollow. She swallowed hard, her hunger gnawing at her insides after using up her Ryoku. As an Ajuchas, she needed to consume others to maintain her individuality and rank, or else she would regress into her Jillian form, never to rise above Minos Grande again. For many, such a fate was considered worse than death. I won't say thank you because you provided me food, she declared with a huff. Kanzuya gently patted her back and offered a warm smile. It's difficult for you to be honest with your words, isn't it? Arg. I'm completely honest. In the midst of his amusing banter, Kanzuya felt a sudden, sharp prickling sensation on his back. He slowly turned to look over his shoulder his eyes narrowing behind his mask as he scanned the horizon. Atop a distant hill, a white figure stood, appearing hazy even to his enhanced vision. However, where his eyes failed him, his knowledge of the Bleach universe came to his aid, helping him identify the mysterious hollow. Tear Harabel. Kanzuya's eyes narrowed, taking on the intensity of a predator stalking its prey. The wheels in his mind turned with an audible creak as he tried to recall all the details of Bleach. He was having difficulty remembering certain things, but there was one image that stuck in his head, a tanned woman with hair the color of shimmering gold, her seductive curves hugged by a white skin-tight jacket, and her ever-so-composed gaze holding an air of authority. The future numero trace of Espada, Tyr Harabel. She should still be a vasto lord like me. Unlike other hollows, Tyr Harabel kept most of her humanity in this form. She, who didn't mind sacrificing her life for her fraction, her aspect of death was fittingly, sacrifice. Hot, strong, and extremely devoted to her closed ones. Yep, just my type of woman. He never hesitated when it came to women. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gone after his teacher instead of his fellow students. Was his new race going to stop his vile seductions? Nope. His new race merely elevated his goal. Now he could live without the restraints of conventional morals. He didn't mind meddling with the plot either. The timeline already veered off course as soon as he interacted with this tomboyish Tsundra deer serving as his mount. He wasn't going to live in fear because of things beyond his control. 
After all, he was a, what was that? The word representing something crucial teased the tip of his tongue, only to vanish like a fleeting shadow. He scratched his head, furrowing his brow as he tried to summon the lost thought. It never returned. Harabel also disappeared from the hill while he was confused. Fuck system, tell me about your functions. An awkward silence answered his inquiry. He asked the same question several times, only to receive a cold shoulder from his system. A system without sentience. Am I in the wrong genre? He sighed and turned his attention to Apache. She quietly nibbled at the hollow, like a delicate mouse picking at a giant wheel of cheese. At her pace, it would take weeks to finish the towering beast. Fortunately, she had her fill in a few minutes, restoring her Ryoku to nearly full. Kanzuya patted her back gently and directed her toward Haribel's location. Don't think I'll let you ride me everywhere, Apache grumbled with reluctance, yet still obeyed his command. This is maddening. Listen here, you little dear. You can ride me when you become an errand car. Errand car. Apache shook her head. I don't know what an errand car is, but sure. I'll ride you once I become errand car. That's a promise then. There was nothing ostensibly alarming about his proposition, yet Apache felt like a mouse that had willingly walked into a mousetrap. The unabashed happiness in his voice sent a shiver down her spine, leaving her to wonder what she had just agreed to. After nearly an hour of searching, he didn't find any trace of Haribel, as if she had retreated into her base after she saw him annihilate the Ajuchas. She may have mistaken him for another bloodthirsty monster. As a lover of peace and a hater of sacrifice, she went out of her way to avoid conflict with him. You know what, Apesai? I'm gonna practice flying. It would be a colossal waste not to utilize his wings. He stood on Apache's back and leaped into the air. She howled behind him as he spread his wings like an eagle preparing for flight. His feet brushed the sand before his wings powerfully flapped, thrusting the air downwards. A swirling cloud of white sand enveloped Apache. She coughed a few times before forcefully expelling the sand with her riatsu. Damn, get away from me. Kanzuya nearly tumbled out of the sky with the sudden shift but managed to stay afloat with nimble flaps of his wings. He felt like he was learning the delicate art of balance all over again. As he practiced, the movement of his wings became more familiar. In just an hour, he was soaring through Hueco Mundo skies, while Apache gazed up at him with envy. You can't fly. Apache shook her head at his question. I can create footholds under my feet with my Riatsu. It's not the same as flying in boy, does it use a lot of Ryoku? The dense concentration of Raishir in Hueco Mundo made it more difficult to create footholds in the air. While any hollow could fly in the world of living due to its low concentration of Raishir, Apache's conservative approach to life ruled out flying because of its expensive energy cost. Creating footholds. Kanzuya mumbled, his wings continuing their steady rhythm. He manifested his riatsu and focused it beneath his feet, instantly feeling a stable platform materialize. Like this? You improve fast, Apache granted him a rare compliment. I don't find it draining, though. If she had fingers, she would be flipping the middle ones at his face. Kanzuya chuckled. With nothing else to do, he began training his racial abilities. As a creature of instincts, he possessed a basic understanding of each one. Mastering his racial abilities was simply a matter of investing time and effort. While frolicking with Apache, he stumbled upon another hollow, which he rapidly dispatched with a powerful Ciro. He felt grateful for his reincarnation as a Vasto Lord, random hollows and ajuchas posed no threat to him. At present, his most significant concern was the hollow reigning over the land of Los Noches as its king. His arsenal lacked the means to counter that skeleton guy's decay ability. It was wiser not to provoke him. That reminds me of Okuyora. Wasn't he a natural Arankar? He saw some hope in fulfilling the seemingly life-threatening task. Okuyora transformed into an Arankar by accidentally breaking his mask. There were more circumstances at play for sure. Are Espadas a thing yet? He remembered Aizen crafting his own Hogyoku to experiment with hollows and create Arankars. However, he was clueless about the current state of Espada as an organization. Forget about Espada. I should make some personal goals. Shaking his head, he pondered some personal goals. After all, everyone needed to strive for something to keep life interesting. 
His objectives were straightforward, such as traveling across Hueco Mundo to find Tyr Haribel, honing his Vasto Lord's power to its limits, and becoming an Arankar. He also wanted Apache to become an Arankar, just so he could fuck around with someone. Seducing her would take nearly zero effort. Heaving a sigh, he let his gaze wander. Let's take it slow. One day at a time. He had only just been born. As a hollow, he possessed all the time in the world to experiment with new ideas. It's always night in Hueco Mundo, don't you know? Apache snickered. You silly goose. In Hueco Mundo, the concept of day and night, entertainment, and laws were as absent as cheerful colors in a graveyard, as if its creator sculpted it with a satirical nod to hell. Weary of the desolate ambience, Kanzuya sought refuge in a natural cave tucked within a mountain. Ah, he groaned in frustration. Kubo, you bastard. This is so hard. Apache looked at him oddly. Kubo. Who is Kubo? I don't know, he said with a sigh. I'm a little frustrated. Why? I'll tell you later. Let's rest for now. Apache agreed with the sentiment and laid flat on the ground. Her position revealed the see-through hollow hole in her stomach. Discerning the symbolic meaning behind Apache's hollow hole was ridiculously simple. She was fed up with being pursued. Thus, she craved the strength to survive. He oversimplified her present desire, as he had no means of delving into her past life. Good night. Kanzuya folded his wings to make them as small as possible and rested his head on Apache, careful to avoid her hollow hole in case it caused her discomfort. Irritated by his wings, he turned to his side. Where do you think you're sleeping? We had a deal, remember? Let's add something else to it. I'll use you as a pillow. You can do the same when you become an Arankar. In her Arankar form, she wasn't very tall, while he was nearly six, possibly taller after transforming into a hollow. He could handle her with ease. Fine. Apache huffed and rested her head on the ground. He was the most insolent man she had ever met, not that she had any chance to deeply know anyone beside him. Ignorant guy. Wake me up if anyone tries to attack. Don't fight on your own. And he was also the most considerate one. Kanzuya touched his mask, and dread consumed him. He hesitated in tearing off his mask, as a wrong step could spell his death. I'll find some hollows to experiment with, preferably a jucha's. Apache glanced at him through her peripheral vision. His quiet reflection made her uneasy. You keep mentioning Arankar this, Arankar that. What is an Arankar? A hollow whose essence is closer to a Shinigami. We supposedly get this power from taking off our mask. Are you crazy? Apache retorted. The mask is a part of our soul. Take off the mask and we'll lose the power to control Ryurioku. We might even die or reform into a Jillian. Once an Ajuchas regressed, they could never regain their form. They would forever be stuck wandering the Hueco Mundo as a giant, mindless Jillian. No Ajuchas wanted to suffer from such fate, thus driving them to devour other hollows Kanzuya reached out and playfully tugged the unicorn-like horn protruding from her forehead. Have faith in your determination to defy the norms. Well, who am I preaching to, anyway? You'd have been toast if I hadn't stepped up back there. I, she wanted to say something but hesitated. There is no point Arankar or not we are just biding time. This is Hueco Mundo, damn it. Don't make me say the obvious. They were going to die one day, she had realized the truth after witnessing the cycle of hollows consuming the weaker ones. She wanted to die peacefully, if possible. Kanzuya didn't expect his teasing to elicit such a dramatic reaction from her. She was getting emotional over her eventual death. What obvious? That we're just prolonging our doom by surviving? That some hollow will come that we can't defeat and devour us whole? Apache nodded vigorously. We can never be the strongest. You're underestimating the power of a vasto Lord Arankar, he rebuked in an intense voice. One more thing. After dying in the world of living, shouldn't we, hollows, make the most out of life here? Are you ready to throw down the towel and let some disgusting worm tear you limb from limb and savor your juicy legs? You will let it happen without retaliating. He had felt weak in his entire life. Never ever was he going to experience the same fate. Gnashing her teeth loudly, she threw a furious glare his way. 
Hell no. I want to live in peace, then say it with me. I'll kick every ass in Hueco Mundo and become the strongest Erencar. Why are you making me say embarrassing things? Say it. His whisper brushed by her ears, making her groan. I'll kick every ass and become the strongest Erencar. She doubted herself until she said it out aloud. His conviction forced her to believe that she, a hollow who barely held enough Ryatsu to be in a juchus, could become the strongest Erencar. She felt refreshed, so much so that she repeated in a cheery voice, I'll become the strongest Erencar. Kanzuya smiled at her brimming confidence. We're off to such a fantastic start, young lady. After a dreamless sleep, Kanzuya absentmindedly browsed through the status shown by his system. General information, name, Kanzuya Ishihara gender, male race, hollow, vasto lord, Ryurioko level, great level, captain class, alignment, neutral evil affiliation, non-racial abilities, zero, Ryurioko offensive technique mastery level intermediate. Sonido, movement technique mastery level basic. Garganta, limited spatial distortion technique. Mastery level yet to learn. He had already grasped all the basic Vasto Lord abilities except for Garganta. Garganta was useful for crossing over to the world of living and Syriidei. He left its mastery for later, focusing on enhancing the combat abilities first. The world of living. The faces of his ex-girlfriend and friend surfaced in his mind. He had come from a different universe, otherwise, he wouldn't possess any meta-knowledge of this universe. That much was clear to him. They must have buried me if terrorist San was kind enough to leave my body intact. As much as he missed their presences, he preferred his new life. Sure, it was boring at a glance, but he had the freedom to go anywhere. While cheering himself up like a fool, he spotted an intriguing detail in the system interface. Every row, except his equipment and abilities, had a pencil icon at the end, he tapped the symbol next to the gender out of curiosity. Options available for, gender, stat, 1 male 2 female 3 futa. The list went on forever, showing absurd names as gender. Helicopter. How is that a gender? Kanzuya regretted experimenting on gender stat. At least he discovered one crucial element from this mishap, he could customize his status to some degree. The system referred to itself as, character system for this very reason. His eyes wandered to the race icon, which sported the same pencil icon. Will it work? He gulped down his saliva. Every race in Bleach had unique abilities. Shinigami had Zanpakuto, which could unlock Shukai and Bankai stages. Hollow had Siro, Sonido, then Arankar had their own versions of Zanpakuto to release different forms. Quincy with their own set of abilities, like Blood Vene and other busted techniques. Then there were Foolbringers born from extremely rare circumstances. The versatility of every race, he'd love to possess that power. Only one person in the Bleach universe will come to have blood from each major race, Ichigo Kurosaki, the protagonist. The godly hybrid of Shinigami, Quincy, Hollow, and Foolbringer. Even that level of power failed against the almighty Yawach. It just went to show how terrifying the father of Quincy truly was. With glazed eyes, he reached for the edit button positioned after the race option while bracing for disappointment. Options available for, race, soul human, the two options startled him. The second option seemed utterly unnecessary. He didn't want to become powerless again. Can you show things in more detail? Defying his expectations, a long list of options appeared before him. A slash N, currently hovering between the rank 10 and 11. If maintain the top 10 until Sunday reset, I'll publish three bonus chapters. Loading evolution database function. Soul, the purest form of a being. Current path of evolution, hollow hollows are souls who materialize their inner heart through the corruption of sins. They lose their minds to raw instincts and animalistic desires. They have existed since the primordial times. Soul, base form, and GT, base hollow, materialization of inner heart and domination by raw instincts, achieved, and GT, Jillian, fusion with souls of similar affinity, achieved, and GT, a juchus, formation of a new consciousness capable of dominating raw instincts, achieved, and GT, vasto lord, partial harmony of raw instincts with consciousness, achieved, potential evolutions in this path, Erenkar. And GT. 
Alternative path of soul evolution, Shinigami souls who manifest their inner heart by external means soul, base form, NGT. 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 Human, a soul residing in a vessel of Kishi to interact with the world of living. Potential path of human evolution, Quincy. Human, base, achieved, NGT, Quincy. NGT. Alternate potential path of human evolution, Fullbringer. Asterisk evolution database will be constantly updated with your knowledge. The wealth of information overwhelmed Kanzuya. As he sifted through the options, he noticed an asterisk at the end, accompanied by an explanation for the numerous question marks scattered throughout the list. It became clear that the status only reflected what he knew or remembered, any gaps in his knowledge or memory resulted in the mysterious question marks. When did I achieve a Juchis class? The, achieved, Marx whispered the possibility that he began as a humble hollow, with those memories vanishing like a mirage or being cast aside like broken toys when he transformed into a Vasto Lord. They don't matter now. He narrowed his eyes at the tick mark available in front of every potential evolution path. He could regress to a previous evolution and even try out the Quincy path. It was a convoluted approach compared to his desired ability to switch races at will. Well, he wasn't going to complain about a power with plenty of potential down the line. This also implied, I can become a Shinigami. His face beamed with excitement. Most of the Bleach story took place in the Soul Society, and most of the intriguing characters lived there. Compared to the intriguing events of the Soul Society, Hueco Mundo felt stupidly plain. I want to meet Mama Unohana and Yorochi, and Rukia. Pushing personal desires aside, he knew remaining a Vasto Lord in Hueco Mundo would attract Aizen's predatory gaze. Rather than biding his time, he felt compelled to journey to the Soul Society, where he could enhance his strength by wielding a Zanpakuto. He acted passively his whole life, letting others decide his fate. What did he receive in exchange? A life of mental anguish and a lead bullet through his head. Now, he had knowledge of the future, the power to switch races, and a ridiculously useful system. He possessed all the necessary tools to become strong and live on his own terms. How pathetic would it be if he became a doll dancing on Aizen's palm? It won't happen. Fury surged within him at the thought of being manipulated like a pawn. After all, he had no control over his previous life. No freedom to decide his future or even the freedom to leave home outside of curfew hours. He despised such a life with passion. His eyes behind the mask suddenly widened as an epiphany dawned on him. He vied for control all his life. A rebel who always wished to resist his grandfather's control. That control slowly slipped away, and he had to live under oppression, that was his life's biggest regret. Aspect of death realized. Innate ability, aspect of death, oppression, unlocked. Laughter erupted from him, as if insanity had taken hold of him. The cave reverberated with his maniacal cackles. Death by oppression. Ah, this is perfect. I love it. Apache wondered if the brutal nature of Hueco Mundo had shattered his sanity in a day. Ui, don't lose it. You can fight it. Push down your instincts. He turned to Apache with a feral grin, his terrorizing aura emphasized by his menacingly glowing eyes. What do you mean? I am a perfectly sane human being yes, I am. Apache couldn't help but miss his gentle, considerate voice. This rowdy Kanzuya sucks. Kanzuya didn't step outside the cave for the next several hours. He wasn't looking to achieve Hikikomori status in Hueco Mundo. To truly grasp the concept of Arankars, he had to get acquainted with the basics of being a hollow. He opted for, closed door cultivation, to hone his Vasto Lord strength and unlock the full potential of his new innate ability. The evolution database provided the basic knowledge, while his own mind filled the gaps. Firstly, hollows weren't the mindless soul eaters the soul society portrayed them as. In fact, Bleach showed they were quite different. The more he learned, the more intriguing complexities arose, complicating his intended path. Questions swirled in his mind, why did a hollow have a mask? Why did they consume others to fill the void in their souls? What was the nature of the void that expanded with their craving for souls? Why did most hollows become more human-like after reaching the Ajuchas class? And most importantly, what exactly was this inner heart that triggered the creation of a hollow? Most importantly, what exactly was the inner heart that triggered a hollow's creation? 
He had numerous theories, but none could be confirmed. Eventually, he abandoned the pursuit of the inner heart's true purpose and shifted his focus to hollow evolutions. Every evolution after Jillian placed great emphasis on suppressing raw instincts. The raw instincts that turned them into hyenas for souls instead of flesh. Each evolution beyond Jillian emphasized suppressing primal instincts, which had driven them to become ravenous soul-seekers. Arankars, for the most part, resembled Shinigami. He closed his eyes, his mind swirling with countless theories. After several minutes of contemplation, he opened his eyes, now gleaming with newfound understanding. He felt like a hermit who had achieved enlightenment. I see. Minos don't eat others to become strong and evolve. The primary goal is strengthening their consciousness, which suppresses their raw instincts. Failure to do so would result in regression to Jillian class. The theory made too much sense to be false or delusional. Then Aaron Cars. His lips curved into a smirk as he realized the true intent of tearing the mask for Aaron Karization. Aizen was right about separating boundaries between a hollow and Shinigami to create an Aaron car. But there was more to the process, otherwise, there wouldn't be natural Aaron cars like Okuyora Cypher and Coyote Stark. Let's test my theory and my new ability. Turning to his drowsy companion, he patted her mask. Come with me. Hmm, where are we going? To cause some chaos, my little friend. Let us toy with the destiny of some hapless souls. Apache looked at him as if he had lost his mind. His first day in Hueco Mundo may have broken him. So about the criticism with Kanzuya's ray-switching ability. He won't be staying hollow only. The whole idea of the story was for a chaotic protagonist to mess around with every faction. He will also invade Wandenrake at some point. But rest assured he will stay hollow a majority of the time since it will be his most powerful form. How would anyone imagine the ability of oppression? The power to overwhelm someone to the point they have no chance to fight back. The power to crush someone under sheer pressure like a bug. The manifestation of Kanzuya's aspect of death worked similarly, yet worlds apart from those concepts. It was truly a breathtaking ability. He went out in search of a foe to test its effectiveness. Lo and behold, he found four massive hollows hibernating in an underground cave. They were Minos Grande. Unlike a Juchas and Vasto Lord, a Minos Grande surpassed the height of an average house in Japan. Each cloaked in black, wearing a mask with an extending nose bearing three holes. Despite their giant size, they were considered foot soldiers in Las Noches, as they were below a Juchas in strength and raw power, and were more commonly known as Jillian. All the Jillian screeched as they sensed the intruders. Apache nudged him with her horn. There is no point in fighting her. Let's go. She could take on three or four Jillians on her own but their combined zero would absolutely wreck her. She was also afraid of attracting some stronger hollow by the fight. Kanzuya merely smiled and stretched his hand towards the Jillians. Oppress atmospheric air. A blue Riatsu surrounded the intimidating giant hollows, and the wind howled like a wolf. Atmospheric air was everywhere, just like Rasher in Hueco Mundo. In a wide open world, the air alone weighed over hundreds of thousands of pounds. Typically, the internal body pressure cancelled the atmospheric air while body tissues absorbed the rest of the net force. The oppression overturned that perfect balance in favor of pure destruction. A Jillian's body structure was incomparably more resilient than human, but could it survive nearly a ton of pressure from all sides? The answer revealed itself in the form of cracking bones. Flesh ruptured and blood spurted. In an expected turn of events, the four Jillians, towering over four stories, crumbled in balls of grotesque flesh. Amazing, the sheer force of his innate ability left him astonished. Aspect of death, oppression oppression crushes all by infallible authority. With the power of oppression, you can heighten any aspect of a physical body, be it your surroundings or a part of your enemy's body. Ryuryoku's consumption will be increased depending on the resistance faced and your comprehension of the aspect. A fitting ability for the man who always lived under the constant oppression of his grandfather, albeit a mental one. He could amplify one aspect of his surroundings as long as it existed physically. He could technically raise anyone's heartbeat and destroy their heart. An instant death that would require immense Ryuryoku varying from individual to individual. The ability, however, wasn't perfect, its energy consumption was its biggest drawback, followed by its conditions. 
Just one use against Jillian's drained his Ryurioku by nearly a quarter. The efficiency would be even worse if he tried to control stronger hollows. The ability wouldn't work if his opponent repelled his Ryatsu with a greater concentration of Ryurioku. I need to expand my knowledge if I want to fully harness this ability. He regretted skipping physics classes and having some juicy time with his math pro-